Hi, this is a quick explainer video to describe how we can sense liquid is present in some sort of a container or tube. This is specifically related to a Miele washing machine, which is um, you know, a pretty high-end washing machine that's currently failing uh, for me. And um, yeah, the repair technician was out, and this is the part he replaced right here. And the twin dose or twin DOS system, however it's pronounced, automatically pumps in detergent and some sort of whitening agent, uh, an oxidizer, as part of its kind of way to make my life easier and also to get recurring revenue for the company. So, of course, if you're going to have tanks in something with uh, some sort of liquid in them, you've got to measure the level or in some way or another, you've got to measure how much is left inside that tank. And one obvious way you could say is when the tank is full, we'll just decrease the amount, whatever we pump in, just like you can check your bank account by um, balance your bank account by measuring what you've spent and what you've added. And you should always know what's in there. But we we know that we have to reconcile that once in a while because stuff leaks in and leaks out one way or another. So there's got to be some other way to verify physically to say we've got liquid in there or we don't. Of course, you could imagine we could have a floating thing inside the tank and as the floating thing rises and falls, it would change the level and we see that in a gas tank in a car. Um, you certainly could have other ways of doing it. And there's a, there's there's certainly some very interesting and amazing ways of doing it. And this is a an ink reservoir for a Canon printer. And this one is fascinating. When I first figured out how this worked quite some time ago, uh, right in here you can see this shiny thing in here. It's kind of a weird. It turns black right there and black right there. But when we're shining straight on it, it looks very bright. And what that is inside there is a prism. So that's a like an arrow point up there. And I, that's not what this video is really supposed to be about, but I'm so fascinated that I had to tell you. And this one works by light going straight down. And if there's no liquid in here, the index of refraction between the plastic and the liquid inside is different than the index of refraction if it's plastic and air inside. And the light will, will bounce out beautifully if there's air inside, and it won't bounce out so well if there's liquid inside. So um, if you want to know more about that, I'm happy to do a second explainer. You could just leave some comments and I'll do a, a more detailed explainer on this one. Super simple way to, to determine if there's liquid inside something, but you do need access to uh, the tank with some light and the tank has to be a very nicely formed tank, which the tank for this is not. This is an injection molded part where we can have beautiful shiny surfaces. This one is a blow molded part like a laundry detergent bottle, not this part, but the, the tank that supplies this washing machine. So that one's not as shiny and it would be very difficult to uh, seal something that's optically correct inside there. So we're gonna just kind of shove that aside. Let's talk about this one instead. This one's ability is limited to telling not how much is in, in this tube, but just whether there's liquid in the tube or not. You can see the tube is almost clear except for a bump that is oriented to the same point that these wires coming out are. There are two wires in each. And if you're looking at my sheet, you might already have a clue as to what's going on here. These are resistive elements in here. There's a resistor under this one and a resistor under this one. And there are two wires going to each. One is for detergent and one is for the whitening agent. And you might say, well, how would we know when we install this? It looks very similar. It's interesting that it's cut like this, by the way. Uh, you might wonder how they would know. And you can see that they've put a pokey oak uh, feature in here that would make it difficult to flip these around. They have a one rib on this side and they have a two rib on this side. And the installation instructions tell you which side to put each. In fact, when you buy the replacement part, it comes with this clip system that orients the product and you really can't put the part in the wrong way because this side is taller than this side and therefore when you try to put the part in the wires won't fit and all sorts of stuff to make sure that you don't put it in wrong. Curious if they figured out that this would be put in wrong by technicians in the field and had to do all this afterward or if they designed this in from the start. I would think they designed it in from the start. As a side note, this is cut here so the part can flex because um, 
for some reason, when you put this in here, it has to be put at these wonky angles. Um, I assume that allows the the detergent to drain out of here if it's empty and not sit in the tube. I presume that's what's going on here. I didn't snap those all the way in, but you get it's still get the picture. It's at these wonky angles. So I presume that's what's going on with these angles. But back to how this thing works, and, and you can see there's really not much to it, so I don't even need to take this out anymore. What's in here is a resistor. It's a platinum resistor. And platinum and many materials, the resistance increases with the temperature. So as we increase the temperature of this resistive element in here, the resistance measured across these two wires or terminals would go up. And correspondingly, if we decrease the resistance, sorry, if we decrease the temperature of this resistor, the associated resistance will also decrease. And it's a substantial change, so it works very well as a temperature sensor. So we we are quite sure that's what's in here, not only because that's what I know, but because the part description says platinum liquid sensor also. So how do these work? And I've used these before in designs of products that I've done when I need to know if there's liquid dripping somewhere. What I'll do is take a resistor and set it into a depression in some sort of container, and I'll let it sit in there, and I'll apply some voltage to it, which will increase the temperature of this junction because there will be power. Power is related to the current squared times the resistance. So if we want to increase the power here in watts, we can raise the current flowing through here. The resistance is, is set by the material property, so that's going to be constant, but we can increase the power by increasing the current until we increase it so much that we burn it out. When I increase this power in here, of course, it will heat up things. Watts, when you put some watts, some energy into something, you'll increase the temperature. Once I remove the power, this will cool back down. And remember, because the resistance varies with temperature, I could measure the resistance and find out what the temperature is. And if I power this up, stop powering it up and immediately start to measure the temperature, the temperature change will depend on whether this resistor is sitting inside of some liquid or if it's sitting inside of air. Liquid being a much higher mass, much higher density than the air around it. So because the liquid is higher mass and higher density, it will hold heat longer and keep this from cooling down as fast. And we all have that experience with heating something that's full of air versus heating something that's full of liquid. Things that are in the air take can, are smaller and can cool faster. Things if you heat all the liquid around it in a pot, for example, and then take the heat off the pot, the pot will stay warmer than if you heat a pot just with air in it and turn it off, an empty pot. Boy, I get so technical sometimes. I forget that a pot with air in it might be called an empty pot. Shame on me. Well, let's get back to a little bit of nerdy technical and look at a graph here. So if we were to add power and take power off in air, the resistance would increase in an exponential way as the temperature got hotter. And then as we take the power off, the um, temperature would decrease fairly rapidly at first and then slow down exponentially like this. But if we add liquid in there, the rate at which the temperature would go up would be slower because we have to heat all the water, the liquid, the detergent, but let's just call it water, all the water around it. And then as soon as we take the, the power off of it, that detergent would cool much more slowly like this. So here it is cooling much faster and here it is cooling much slower. So the difference in these two curves would be quite obvious. And you could either watch the curve and measure from point to point to point to point, and I don't know how they're doing it, and say, what's the rate of change of this? Or if you wanted your software in the sensor to be quite simple, you could say, I'm going to power it on for a certain amount of time. I'm going to stop and then I'm going to measure the temperature at the same time each time. And I'm just going to look for this voltage. And I would not be at all surprised if that's what they're doing. I'm going to look for this voltage right here. And if this voltage is very low, I know I have air. And if this voltage is higher, then I have detergent. It'd be a little safer to watch the rate of change of this. And you could say this is changing fast change, fast change, fast change. And you have a number of points that you would be absolutely sure that you took a number of measurements and they were all decreasing fast. Whereas this one, you would have a number of measurements and they were all decreasing much more slowly. You can add that up and have confidence that this 
measurement is truly detergent and this measurement is truly air. Or if it's quite reliable, you can just take this one point. Usually you experiment to find that out. So that's how the sensor works in the Miele washing machine for the twin dose system. Just as an aside, it's called twin dose. And it's a German thing, and I'm not sure if that's twin DOS, like disk operating system, which I highly doubt, or if they meant to say dose, as in twin dose in the detergents. So I'm calling it twin dose, but I'm happy to hear otherwise. Thanks for watching. Please do give me a thumbs up. It's really helpful. And if you're interested in my videos, subscribe. And certainly if you want to know more about this refractive index sensor, which I again find amazing and always have, um, send me a comment and I'll do a video. Thanks for watching.